Thanks so much, uh, Yvonne. Um, morning, everybody. It's great to, to be here. I've got to give you the official welcome to the city, the UK's capital of sport. <laughs> Correct? I know there's a few colleagues from down the M62, so I thought I'd say that. Home of the Premier League champions, and hopefully still the Premier League uh, champions. That's your Everton supporting mayor uh, talking there, because we're all behind City uh, right now. Um, can I a great I am actually a Liverpool fan, Andy. Oh really? my God, it was all going. <laughs> it was all going. How can you admit that, uh, Yvonne? Anyway, but uh, uh, we. But obviously, this is a, a great place to be able to champion uh, sport, and that's what I'm trying to do. And I think to pick up what Yvonne was saying in the introduction. In a way that Whitehall sometimes misses people and comes up with initiatives that are kind of getting where people are. You know, obviously going with sport as a focus for policy across all of the different uh, sectors is, is where this place is, it's how it ticks. So you kind of got people with you straight away and that's why I put it at the heart of every single thing that I'm, um, that I'm doing. And I'm trying to lead from the front, so I'm fresh from running uh, the Boston Marathon. Although if you'd have um, kind of taken some, well, there were some pictures taken of me along the route, it was more a case of GM crawling, I think, rather than GM moving, but never mind, we'll, we'll move swiftly, uh, swiftly on from that. But you know, it's kind of interesting really, because I noticed just doing that, how many people around me in the kind of office and in family started doing a bit more as well, isn't it? It's kind of, it's an interesting thing, isn't it, when you build a culture of physical activity in your own life or in your workplace, how many people you, you bring uh, you bring with you and that's what we're all about you know I did say to Yvonne uh, when, when she was uh, leading up GM moving I'm saying the same to Haley now let's set a really ambitious target you know why isn't this place the most active uh, city region in the UK it should be it will be I guarantee that to you it will be because we're on a mission all of us with uh, with with this I was told by Haley today to wear my trainers it's probably because I'm out campaigning after this for local elections but I was quite happy to do that we had a, a, a kind of inspirational person working at GMCA who's now on the health team Rachel Allen I don't know if Rachel's here today but she works on the GM cancer team now and she put an idea to me in the early days when I was mayor to say that formally we should change the dress code of all GM public bodies that it's okay to wear trainers uh, to meetings so I, I adopted that and announced it at a, um, at a conference and it's kind of happening a bit isn't it people start sending their photos on Twitter now aren't they of the trainers that they're wearing at meetings so it's kind of it's kind of interesting isn't it it's not about it is partly about the big policies that you do but it's also about culture isn't it permission permission to put sport and physical activity first because quite honestly in that Whitehall world that Yvonne mentioned, that isn't the case. It's an afterthought at best. And that is such a missed opportunity. Because I personally believe kind of sport and physical activity should be at the heart of every big public policy. Uh, it should be at the heart of education. I know from my school years, the day you went to school with your boots in your bag was the day you had a bit of hope in your heart. You felt good about everything. You were more engaged in the school environment. And that's particularly true you know, for kids who might not be confident academically. Give them the chance to feel confidence in that way. I think it's certainly true in terms of a, a crime policy. We're having all this debate now about knife crime. Well, come on. If you're going to cut youth services, if you're going to take away uh, places for young people to get active, you're going to kind of raise charges for them to use sports facilities. Don't be surprised if young people drift towards uh, less uh, constructive things out of, out of school time. In my view, it is the best ageing policy. You know, we, we, we have a culture here of saying we're not going to talk about old people in the negative. I've banned the phrase bed blocker from any meeting in Greater Manchester. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear public services talking about people as though they are the problem to be managed. We've got to think about them as we're the, we're the people to enable them to do what they want to do and get, get the most that they can uh, out of life. And that's the kind of culture we need, uh, we need to have in everything that we do. But let's get to the heart of it. I'm just going to focus on, on one thing, uh, which in my view justifies uh, making sport and physical activity a, a major priority. In this century, I would put it to you that the single biggest health issue is mental health. That is the 21st century health challenge. How do we help people manage their mental health and well-being 
on a, on a day-to-day basis. More importantly, how do we build that culture from a very early age in schools? I, I feel the, the biggest kind of gap at the moment in terms of what the need is out there and where provision is, is in child and adolescent uh, mental health. I think there's a massive need that isn't being properly, properly met. And uh, that is a worrying uh, position uh, to be in. 0.7% of the NHS budget is spent on child and adolescent mental health. Just think about that for a minute. £120 billion budget, 0.7 goes on, on that issue. Why? Because the NHS is still working as a treatment mentality. It waits for people to go wrong and then it will come in and provide expensive treatment. It hasn't fully yet embraced a culture of prevention. That's why I'm quite proud, actually, that one of the, um, the, the, the flagship schemes we've brought through, through devolution, is something called mentally healthy schools. And part of that is putting independent counselling in our primary and secondary schools to give young people somebody to talk to. But we've crucially linked it to physical activity in our schools and the, the Daily Mile and other initiatives that we're, that we're championing. Because I personally believe that physical activity is the first stage of a good mental health policy. I know when I was training for the marathon that I just felt better at work. Every day I've been out for a run, I just felt more able to cope with the stress that comes with a job like mine and no doubt a job, a job like yours. It is the first stage to feeling in control again, feeling that things are possible, that you can get on top of things. And I always used to say this to, to colleagues in the Department for Health when I was Health Secretary. It seems to me that we kind of spend millions on trying to tackle the symptoms of things. So millions on smoking cessations, millions on kind of drink awareness campaigns, millions on uh, uh, obesity campaigns, drug campaigns. But actually they're all the kind of symptoms of somebody not currently feeling good about themselves and living a, a, a good life. Why not kind of go back the other way and spend millions on getting people physically active? It, it, it's not yet in the, in the DNA of some of our public services. They, they don't think of it as their job and they need to think of it as their job. There is a really clear and proven link between levels of physical activity and good mental health and well-being. There is a clear link between physical activity and delaying the onset of dementia or improving the lives of people with dementia if they are more physically active. It's, this needs to be more widely uh, embraced, it seems to me, by the system. And that is what we're, we're trying to do here. That's the culture that we're trying to build. I'm really pleased to see the latest statistics on levels of physical activity. We are improving at a faster rate than the rest of the country when it comes to get, moving people from inactivity to activity. I think we've seen a, about a one point 5% increase on the latest statistics. The England average is a 0.5% increase. So the great work of Yvonne and now Haley, it's clearly, it's clearly paying off. Something is happening uh, out there. This is what the public want anyway, and we're almost going with the grain, as I said at the beginning, going with what people uh, want. And why is that really important when it comes to wider health? See, my reason for saying to the health service that they should focus on physical activity is because there's two reasons why I think it's, it's a priority for, for investment when it comes to public health. Number one, it's an easier change to make than being a smoker and suddenly becoming a non-smoker, or having a poor diet and suddenly changing your diet completely, or being a sort of moderate to heavy drinker and suddenly sort of making a big reduction. I think it's easier to go from inactivity to activity than any of those other things. But once people have made that change, here's the second reason why it should be prioritised. It's a catalytic change, i.e. it puts you in a position where you feel you can do something about your smoking, your drinking or your diet. You just feel more in control. And that's why, in my view, it should be, when it comes to public health, it should be uh, prioritised. So let me take you through some of the specifics in terms of what does, this, uh, what does this mean here in Greater Manchester. Well, as I said, it's physical activity in all policies. So let's come straight to, to transport, which I think is the policy that you can kind of use to make the biggest impact when it comes to the environment 
that promotes physical activity. I was given um, around £250 million pounds, uh, by the government uh, to uh, prioritise transport improvements in Greater Manchester under what they call the Transforming City Scheme. It was a bit controversial at the time, but I proposed that £160 million pounds of it should be uh, allocated to our Cycling and Walking Commissioner, Chris Boardman, uh, and his plans to develop a world-class uh, cycling and walking network here, the B network. But we did it, and I don't know if you followed this, but Chris is now on with his, his work. I believe this is the kind of prioritisation that we, that we need. And why have I done that? I've done it because I know that if you invest in that way, you're going to reach more people, because cycling and walking is for everybody. Whereas if you just spent it on Metrolink or just spent it on uh, buses or trains, you know, it doesn't touch all of the population. But of course, um, the returns on that investment are greater. Where's the health return from building a road? You know, there isn't one, is there? In fact, there's probably a health detriment from building a road. You get a clean, a non-clean air, negative. But if you build cycling uh, infrastructure, of course, you are getting a transport benefit in terms of improving productivity. You're also, though, getting a major health benefit in terms of cleaning up the air and individual levels of physical activity, encouraging people to become more active. So we kind of have to get ourselves to a position here where sport and physical activity are not the afterthought, the last thing to be considered. You've got to turn it completely on its head and say it's the first thing that should be considered. I think you've been hearing say about social prescribing. I would say that's the next big thing that we really want to embrace here in Greater Manchester. If we're serious about mental health, and if we want a 21st century health and care system, you should be more likely to leave your GP with a reference for exercise referral than a prescription for antidepressants. That for me is a test of whether or not the NHS has made a transition from a 20th century treatment service towards a 21st century health promotion service. So social prescribing, absolutely. Here in Greater Manchester, with Health Devolution, we've got to start linking our health service with our councils. Look at all the capacity that they've got in leisure centres. Uh, surely we can do something here to connect social prescribing to that, that capacity. As Culture, Media and Sports Secretary, I championed a scheme that kind of still, it still irks me that it got cancelled so quickly by the coalition. But I promoted free swimming for under 16s and over 60s. And actually some of our councils here still do it. It was a simple, simple scheme where we would say, look, no charges, you can just swim. And, and I think we've got to get back to, to schemes like that. Could the health service help bring back a GM-wide free swimming scheme, recognising that running is not, not for everybody? Well, let's, let's give everybody their route into, into physical activity. And I think these are the kind of ideas that we need to, to explore uh, a, bit, um, a bit more. And yes, let's reach, I think the conference has talked about groups that are not currently being, being reached. So I just want to talk about a specific I'm working on at the moment that, that I think is, has got real potential. We are working with the ECB, uh, Lancashire County Cricket Club and Foundation, and Chance to Shine on a Greater Manchester Cricket Strategy, which we hope to publish in the next, uh, in the next couple of months. It's quite exciting because cricket, I think, is recognising the need to embrace some get away from some of the traditional thinking and really embrace new forms of the game. So street cricket is a big, will be a big, big part of it. But the evidence that they've got from London and other places is that you can really take physical activity into the heart of communities where it, we've got currently the lowest levels of participation. I'm thinking particularly about uh, people from South Asian uh, communities. And particularly uh, perhaps some of the parents who are not, who are not physically active. So our cricket strategy is going to be about re-presenting re, um, the game to young people across Greater Manchester, but particularly in those communities where the love of cricket is strong, but where there's a sense of underrepresentation in terms of levels of, of, of physical activity. And I'm absolutely going to be learning from the brilliant work that netball have done uh, over the years with the back to netball scheme. That is a really great example of how an individual sport can kind of use the fact that parents are driving uh, kids to, to netball, then to kind of get, bring, the, bring the mums back in uh, alongside uh, the young people when it comes to training sessions. And I think through this cricket strategy we want to do something similar. Engage the parents as volunteers uh, and, and make it a cross-generational 
uh, thing. So look out for the Greater Manchester uh, cricket strategy that's, um, uh, that's coming, uh, coming quite soon. Um, I'll probably finish there, Yvonne, and let people get into to questions, but I hope you're getting the sense that this is at the heart of, of all of our, our plans. You know, we are trying to develop a culture here in our public services which is really about one public service, not about the silos of public services, but simply about one place-based team in every locality that try and helps people to get back to living a, a good life. And I'm absolutely clear that getting people physically active is a, is a crucial step in whatever your public policy objective is. If it's to get kids to do better at school, if it's to get um, people in their middle years back to work if they've been out of work for a long time, you know, start with getting them physically active. That is probably the simplest things that can be done. You know, DWP don't currently work with that kind of mindset, but we should here in Greater Manchester help people get, get going again and, and support them to do that. It should be part of a good ageing strategy, uh, helping uh, older people. You know, I keep saying this, we've got part run and it's brilliant, but why isn't there a part walk? You know, why don't we have a, an appointed time in the week where older people can meet and go on a power walk together in, in, our, in our different uh, communities? These are the kind of ideas that I think we need to sort of start, start talking about, recognising that the, this is the simplest and the cheapest way of achieving public policy objectives. The more you can lift levels of physical activity in your population, I think the more successful you will be at getting people back to work Reducing rates of youth uh, offending, uh, giving people, older people, independence in, in older life. It's the underlying uh, change that we need to see that will bring so many social benefits across the board. And let's be honest, it's the cheapest thing to, to deliver uh, as well. So, you know, we feel that we're onto something. I think if a city like this can't do it, then I don't know where, where can do it. You know, we've got strength in all of our sporting institutions. The public are passionate uh, about, uh, about sport. You know, I want to prove, I'm on a mission to prove all of those people in Whitehall who used to say to me, oh, it doesn't, we're going to prove them, we're going to prove them wrong. And we're going to show that a city that embraces uh, actually is the city region that gives people the best chance of the best uh, growing up, the best place for young people to grow up, for people to get on in life and then for people to grow old uh, and that's what we're, we're all about. So thank you very much indeed for listening everybody, I'd be more than happy to take any questions that you've got. Thank you.